Hey Archivers, what's going on? Media Bias here from the Halo Archive. We Today we're going to do the third episode of Multiplayer Map Lore, and it's going to be kind of a mix of both Monolith and Impact, two maps in Halo 4. Uh, one was strictly a Forge map, the other was in the Majestic Map Pack DLC. Uh, with me I have Toa Freak from Halo Cannon. Toa, you can say what's up, man. Hey guys, how's it going? And uh, I actually think, Toa, we'll start off with... You know, you can give the official description out of the Halo 4 visual guide, if you'd like, yeah. um, for Monolith. Here we go. Acquired from incredibly precise environmental scans stored on Requiem, this particular particular location is believed to have been a monument for Forerunner warriors shortly after their long-forgotten war with the ancient humans. In the aftermath of this great conflict, the Didact personally ordered a, that a number of these towering structures be built through the system, throughout the system, including the narrow asteroid field slung near the core world of so both Sothra Hakor, where this site apparently resides. While the, val while the validity of this hypothesis may be questioned, the scans acquired are incredibly compelling and clearly convey the majesty of Forerunner architecture. Great read. Um, there's definitely some interesting points that you mentioned in there yeah. we can get to. Um, I guess for now we'll kind of start with, you know, the map itself. Um, when you start out, you know, you've got this cool Forerunner architecture, like you actually mentioned, um, in kind of a desolate system. We know we're right next to Sothra Hakor. Um, so we're in the Hakor system, which is where the last battle of Forerunners and humanity was fought. Um, and, you know, right when you start, and, and you had pointed this out, Toa, I didn't, I didn't think about the star system, but, you know, and I, and I didn't even notice this until now, but in the middle of the map above the middle base, on the top, there's kind of this, you know, it's kind of like a pyramid, upside down pyramid type thing. And then it starts moving and it projects almost, you mentioned a star system possibly. Yeah. I mean, you see these objects that are very clearly orbiting, um, you know, a, like a center of mass, uh, or this, the, um, the structure, which some have suggested may very well may be a map of that, of the Hukor system. Yeah. So, and that, that'd be that'd be pretty cool too. I mean, it's like they they put that in there. Um, it definitely seems it kind of makes the map feel like it's alive um, when you Absolutely. when you go into it. You know, you've got we've got the two bases now. These are probably mostly for aesthetics. Um, would be you know the red side, the blue side, but there are some some strange symbols on each side that are different than the other. Um, you know, you could kind of, I guess, wonder what those are. We know <laughs> there's plenty. Forerunners loved symbols. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but overall, it's it definitely feels, I mean, once you read the description of that, hey, this was, you know, the Warrior Servants uh, monument, you can definitely, I don't know what it is, but it almost, it feels like, <laughs> it feels like it as well. Um, just with the, the type of architecture, if you look at some of, the towers on each side it almost it almost is similar to the not you know not exactly but almost just the um what what's the word i'm looking for the shape of mantle's approach yeah um, definitely or the definitely or the composer so. do you have anything else on the the map itself that you can think of not exactly i mean most of it, most of it revol result revolves around the the holographic uh the holographic image at the center. The rest of it's mostly just, you know, aesthetic and, uh, you know, geometry for gameplay. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, if we were to look out into, you know, the space around it, though, there's definitely some interesting things. Most notably, right away, you can see the planet, Sothra Hakor, um, you know, which is just, I think, pretty cool in itself because that's the closest we've ever been to... Um, Charm, Charm a core, yeah. yeah, which has more than enough lore to go on for <laughs> hours of, of podcasting. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for those of you that aren't aware, that is where the last battle between Forerunners and Humanity was actually fought um, and was also the same resting place as Forthencho when he was composed, um, as well as where the humans had transported the Primordial. And so there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of cool cool um, story and background to that, which I hope we see eventually 
in and of game. course it's the location of a number of precursor artifacts yeah that's why humanity chose it forerunners yeah. possibly being less likely to attack them as severely like, exactly but, and and so we know that you know it's pos- i mean it doesn't mean that this that Sath or Hakor had the same sort of uh you know the number of precursor artifacts and everything but we're we're in the vicinity of where precursors had set up some sort of you know technology um which is interesting because if you look kind of to the left of the of of Sathar Hakor um you can see a kind of like an orangish yellow type nebula and then it looks like in this far distance a really bright star system or or something along that matter um which you know may not be interesting right away but then if you go to and you play the map impact it looks to be almost almost the same yeah it's a very similar Im- very similar imagery it almost looks like to be the almost looks to be the same image maybe with some et- you know with some editing maybe but right could it possibly indicate that they're you know within the same nebula or even there we say it the same star system yeah i mean it's you know before i well you know what, I'll, I'll finish this thought and then we can kind of give another description of impact uh with that visual guide which will do more justice than i ever can but <laughs> um you know if we if you look here everyone you can see the same it you know you can see that that i don't know if it's a star system or a nebula or what it is but it looks almost exactly the same in the same color and then you've got the orangish yellow um you know cloud surrounding it which looks like it could be the same as well it just looks like you know on monolith it's maybe a little more dull because maybe we're further back or you know the lighting is just uh throwing off the intensity of the colors a little bit but it definitely if if you want to go ahead and you can read that if you have it pulled up the yep i got it great yeah because this will definitely give some more uh some more interesting thought to the fact that monolith and impact could be in the same system. Yep. In 2547, an Oni patrol drone recorded a violent meteor collision with an unmarked, unidentified object, presumably originating from outside the galaxy. This gener- uh, this event generated enough curiosity from top researchers for Oni to warrant dispatching a handful of EVA-ready remote contact teams. When the teams arrived, they located a large, non-native fragment of, it, of an impacting agent of unknown origin. Not only was this fragment incredibly resistant, but material composition was highly irregular, unlike anything Oni had ever encountered before. Even more intriguing, the object's age appears to indicate that, the, that it originates well prior to that of the earliest known Forerunner artifacts. So, you know, basically, guys, that what that means is that this this rock that was in impact um in the map here that you can see inside the base that unsc <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly um originated from long before the earliest of known forerunner artifacts which you know we ha- i mean that's that's huge um they yeah, don't it appears to be sorry to interrupt you but yeah. it appears to be of extra galactic origin Ex- yeah no that's that's a great point i mean it's something that they we don't know <laughs> humanity doesn't know wh- like who or what it's from or when and so all they know is that it's it's unknown and it's before anything they've seen forerunner which screams precursor like <laughs> like you had mentioned um yeah. so you know the reason we kind of tied impact into monolith is because you know we can see that the systems look similar but then also that this precursor, potentially precursor artifact, um, would, that would mean that it impacted in the Hakor system, which would make sense because we know that there were, you know, more than enough precursor artifacts on something like Charam Hakor. Um, so, so that really kind of ties ties both of these maps together in maybe a way that no one would have re- originally thought, you know. Certainly. The other thing is, you know, the U- like I said, UNSC built a base there. Oni had, did it say um, Oni had, had inspected it too, Toa? Was yeah. That... yeah, basically the facility we see on impact is an Oni facility. It's an Oni facility, okay. Yeah, my apologies there. Um, but yeah, so this is, 
you know, in my, to kind of recap, we've got Monolith with a really, first of all, Monolith itself is just, I love the Forerunner architecture on that map. Just, um, my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, you've got the, the hologram that sets up in the beginning. And if you haven't seen it, I would recommend going to check it out. Um, it's actually pretty cool. And Toa mentioned that it looks to, it, it could be, I mean, we're, we don't know for sure, but it could be a star system that it projects. Yeah. And so this is somebody else's theory. So if, if you're watching this and you, you identify, you know, and this was you just let us know so we can pr- properly credit you. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'm sure other people have, I know I've seen, you know, this on forums and everything between the, the connection between these two maps. Um, so yeah, if, if anyone <laughs> is like, Hey, they're stealing it, go ahead and comment on the video. We'll add you in. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. um, I saw it on the archive, but I'm not, I don't remember for sure. Oh yeah, I'm sure we've, we've talked about this before. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall guys, it's, uh, you know, it's, it definitely adds, even more, it, it ties in more of Forerunner history and potential, just the potential of any sort of Greg Bear, you know, lore that he had put into the universe. Um, we might, we could be seeing in Halo 4 in the maps here. Um, hopefully, we get to go to the Hakor system in game, in campaign. I mean, there that would, that's what everyone's wanted to see. And I, <laughs> you know, so when, when they, when Halo 4 came out, this is just a side note, I remember looking through the names of the terminals and I saw uh, Charum Hakor, and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, we're going to see the Timeless One. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I remember the, the frenzy that everyone was like up, that everyone was up in when that first happened. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> exactly. Because at the time, we, I don't, at the time, Silencium hadn't come out and we weren't even sure of really what the, right? We weren't sure of how the yeah. Didact had, uh, you know, finished his story, I guess. Before. Exactly. Yeah. There was a lot of confusion, hope. Conception. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that, I think we, we pretty much wrapped it up here. It's another uh, third, third episode of multiplayer map lore. We'll be doing more of these. I know it's been a while since the last one. Um, but Toa, do you have anything, you know, to say before we sign off here? No, I mean, we've co- we covered everything just about as well as you can cover it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, So once again, guys, Toa Freak from Halo Cannon will have his link in the description. It's going to be all over the video. Um, And then, you know, Media Bias here from the Halo Archive. Um, Join our forum. Check out our site. We have news, blogs. Uh, But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Media Bias from the Halo Archive, Toa Freak from Halo Cannon. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.